NanoCAD construction is where you plan land works and design construction projects. Version 20.1 is based on NanoCAD Plus, and so you get everything that's in it, plus functions specific to construction, like IFCs, point clouds, raster underlays, and building design. The new release of NanoCAD construction has an updated user interface. The icons are redesigned, and it supports both light and dark themes. NanoCAD Construction 20.1 does automatic numbering of objects. The types of objects include blocks with attributes and the various forms of text. So I started the object numbering command and I'm going to select everything in the drawing. I can filter out the items I don't want. Notice I've placed these pieces of text that just have an X in it. I press enter to continue the command remove the entities I don't want to deal with, leaving text. Notice attribute selection is text, and down here is the replacement text. So I will type in prefix, and then specify the order in which entities are numbered. I'm going to go with the default in this case. I click OK, and a split second later, all the text entities are replaced with sequential numbers. The new release of NanoCAD Construction now allows you to format text in tables. To do so, simply double-click, choose the portion of text you wish to format, and then do things like change the color, the height, and the boldface. When done, click OK and press Escape. NanoCAD Construction has a new way to dimension non-circular curves like splines, ellipses, and even arcs. From the Dimension drop-down, choose Offset Dimension, and then choose the object. Next, you're prompted to choose where to begin and where to end the dimension, as well as where to place it. I'll repeat it for this ellipse and for this arc, endpoint to endpoint. NanoCAD Construction improves its capabilities with IFCs, industry foundation classes that are used with architectural drawings. So here I've opened this four-story building, and one of the new features in the IFC panel is the ability to display the IFC structure in different ways. Here, for example, by IFC type, spaces, slabs, windows, and so on. Here it's displayed by floors, ground floor, levels 1, 2, and 3, and by layer name. And then you can toggle on and off elements of the IFC model. Here I'm going to turn off third floor, second floor, first floor, leaving visible only the ground floor. When I open up the ground floor, I can select the stair and toggle it on and off. Then I can zoom into it. And when I select it inside the structure, here I see the IFC properties concerning it. The room command provides information about spaces. So click on the construction tab, click on the room button. I'm going to define it through this rectangle. And then this dialog box lets me specify which kind of information will be displayed for the room. What I like is that when you, as you turn options on and off, you get a handy preview. And then in the finishing tab, you can define what the room's walls, floors, and ceiling are made of. Click OK, and then the information is placed. This information is a room entity, and so you can double click it to bring back the dialog box to make changes. So for example, I'm going to turn on Show Contour, click OK, and now the blue rectangle shows the outlines of the room.